Over a hundred years later, Sir Isaac Newton applied his theories of gravity to the idea of a wobbling Earth. He determined that the sun and moon were the only things big enough and near enough to cause the wobble. This explanation of precession is known as the lunisolar theory. Another factor that might contribute to the wobble is the shape of the Earth. If the Earth were a perfect sphere, there would be no precession because there would be no way to apply that torque on the Earth. But since the Earth spins, it makes itself oblate by that spinning, so it has bulges on the equator. So uh, this leads to a net force which would want to put the Earth upright. That's what the Earth doesn't allow it to do, but the Earth cannot completely escape uh, that pull from the Moon, and uh, instead of being positioned upright, uh, it will uh, shift the orientation of the axis. In other words, it will cause this precession. This is the predominant theory among astronomers today. But in 1749, French astronomer Jean Leron d'Alembert found that Newton's lunisolar equations did not quite work, so he added variables for torque and inertia. Still today, Looney solar precession formulas continue to be adjusted, and some say they don't reflect physical reality. According to the theory of lunar solar precession, if the axis of the Earth were to change relative to the Sun, this would have an effect on the seasons on the Earth. They would occur earlier or later, so we would notice variations, but this does not happen. The seasons are caused by the tilted Earth revolving around the Sun. Any change in the tilt of the Earth, whether due to a massive meteor impact or the subtle wobble of Looney solar theory, would result in a change of seasons, even though our calendar would stay the same. Looney solar precession theorists reconcile the regularity of our seasons by requiring the equinox to occur before the Earth completes its full 360 degree orbit around the Sun. But this solution contradicts lunar equations and observed eclipse cycles. Each answer merely creates a new question. Could there be an easier explanation of precession? Ancient scholars who observed precession of the equinox provided a simpler explanation than a wobbling Earth. They said that our sun curves through space, moving in a great orbit of its own, pulling the Earth and other planets along with it. If the Earth did move along with the sun on a curved path through space, we might see the same precession of the equinox through the zodiac and changing of the pole stars that the Looney solar wobble theory now attempts to explain, but it would not be caused by the Earth's wobbling independent of the Sun. It would be caused by the whole solar system curving through space. Another reference frame is at work. We believe that our Sun moves in space with our entire solar system, that the axis of our Earth remains aligned to a point in space where that is that is fixed in respect to the equinoxes it's fixed in respect to all the solstices so that basically our entire system moves around a point in space and this point in space we believe is a star a partner star to our own sun some say the binary model confirms all of our celestial observations without the need for excessive torque or epicycle type explanations. While the concept of a second sun challenges our present understanding of the solar system, it is hardly a new idea. Some of the earliest astronomical records refer to the existence of dual suns. In fact, Mithraic beliefs were based on this concept. There's one sun which is part of the planetary system and there's one sun outside the solar system. And this allows Mithras to both be the sun, Mithras Sol Invictus, Mithras the unconquerable sun, and also seem to be operating for the sun or on behalf of the sun. The yogis of ancient India 
accepted the binary model as a matter of fact, and also mentioned that it was the cause of precession. In 1894, Swami Sri Yukteswar, a great Hindu sage, described our solar system and the great cycle. We learn from Oriental astronomy that moons revolve around the planets, and planets turning on their axis revolve with their moons around the sun. The sun, with its planets and their moons, takes some star for its jewel and revolves around it in about 24,000 years of our Earth, a celestial phenomenon which causes the backward movement of the equinoctial points around the zodiac. The theory, the binary, is that our sun is rotating around another sun. And that, of course, the whole thing, the whole, the, the system, what you might say, is also rot rotating around what they call the grand central sun. Could it be that the ancient knowledge of this dual sun was lost during our descent into the dark ages of the Kali Yuga, just as we lost our knowledge of a heliocentric system? And as we now ascend toward the golden age once more, will science rediscover this binary companion? As we look deeper into the universe and expand our knowledge of its motion, we've come to realize that single suns are more the exception than the rule. Roughly half of the stars you find in the universe are alone and the other half uh, are in groups and often the groups consist of two and uh, if that is a group of two then we talk about uh, binary stars. But it can also be three, four, five, uh, there's no limit on that. Binary is that it seems to be the, the common observation in the cosmos now. Most of them are actually binary systems. With so many binaries in the heavens, why wouldn't our sun have a partner? Then again, if it did, wouldn't we be able to see it by now? With our high-tech observatories or the Hubble Space Telescope? While there might not be a visible companion, it doesn't mean one's not there. Some stars can't be seen at all, such as black holes or old neutron stars. And others, like brown dwarfs, are barely detectable. Also, the long orbit period of 24,000 years would make the connection of our Sun to a binary partner extremely difficult to detect. One sign we'd expect to see would be the changes in the Sun's rate of movement. In a binary system, orbital speed is not constant, and theorists say it would cause changes in the precession rate. As soon as two celestial bodies orbit each other, according to Kepler's laws, you have elliptical orbits. And if you have that, you have where when the bodies are closer to each other, they tend to be faster, and then as the other object moves further away, it gets slower and in again. If the current rate of speed were constant, a complete binary cycle would take almost 26,000 years. But scientists have confirmed that the rate of precession is increasing. In a binary system, this would mean that two stars are moving closer together, and the cycle would take much less than 26,000 years. Analysis of the data has shown that it is actually closer to a 24,000 year period. If we keep observing, if we make future measurements, that would indicate, certainly, that we are in a binary system. The cycle of a binary system might also be observed in the geological record. Mathematician Malutin Milankovic noticed the Earth has had global warming and cooling cycles that roughly correlate to the length of the great year. Just as the binary model answers questions of the past, it could also be applied to solve scientific questions of the present. For example, at the edge of our solar system is a field of asteroids known as the Kuiper Belt. In 2001, a team of scientists from the University of Michigan made a startling discovery. The asteroids appear to end very abruptly. 
a sheer edge like this would be expected in a binary system. Also, a large number of long cycle comets in our solar system come from a very small part of the sky. Although some astronomers like John Matisse and Daniel Whitmire think it may result from the gravitational pull of an unconfirmed tenth planet, our sun's binary could also have this effect. Another enigma. All celestial bodies have angular momentum a force that corresponds to their mass and motion. Yet in our solar system, angular momentum is unevenly distributed. The Sun has 99.9% .9 of the total mass, but only 1% of the total angular momentum. If we acknowledge that our Sun is curving through space in a 24,000 year binary orbit, we find the Sun's angular momentum was there all the time but primarily in its orbital motion, not just in its spin. Although the possibility of a binary star agrees with many observed facts, it does raise questions. Where is it? How do we find it? The most common objection is, if we were in a binary system, we would know it by now. But we may be looking for something that is very far away and very hard to see. One of the stars might have evolved enough so that it has died and has become a white dwarf and then lost a lot of its heat and became fine, faint as well. Or it might have been a, a wannabe star uh, who just was born as a brown dwarf and never became a real star and it's too dark for this. But if it's sufficiently far away and sufficiently faint, uh, then it would just sit there and maybe orbit the sun within a few thousand years. Who knows, I cannot have any positive opinion about this, but I would not rule it out. Perhaps we've already seen our sun's binary companion, but clinging to old theories kept us from realizing it. If so, it would not be the first time that new knowledge was met with resistance. An Earth-centered solar system was undeniable fact until Copernicus realized that another reference frame was at work. The Earth itself was moving. And Einstein denied the existence of black holes, even though his theories predicted them. People also believed in the flat Earth, and it kept, it kept for, for long periods of time. It's just a, it's a, it's a, it's a thought that is embedded, so deeply embedded, that we just don't see any other world, that we don't, that we don't see an alternative, that we might uh, see a phenomena but we don't see the reality of it. It may be that still another reference frame is at work. The solar system could be curving, producing the change in orientation we call precession, and just maybe ushering us into a higher age. And so we continue our quest for the truth, using new technologies to see much fainter and more distant objects in space. Astronomers at the University of Hawaii have now detected a very faint brown dwarf companion to a nearby star. And recently, scientists detected a Kuiper Belt object more than half the diameter of Pluto. It is likely but just at the beginning of a string of such discoveries. If it can be proven that our sun is indeed in a binary system, that would uh, certainly shed some new light on the knowledge and wisdom that ancient civilization had. They understand the rules and the laws by which we human beings are here on Earth, and they understand that we're here for a particular purpose. We're not accidental glitches in a meaningless universe. I think the proof will come. We just haven't got to the point where we're able to, to figure it out yet. New discoveries in astronomy and archaeology are adding more and more to our understanding of the true depth of our own history. If we continue these pursuits, perhaps we will prove the link between binary motion, precession, and man's place in the great year 